Can you name the only modern roll of quarters that I would go through and look for varieties in? Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Public Coin, and today I've got uh, a bunch of Wisconsin quarters to run through. I will go quickly on these because that's how I look at them, because all I am looking for is one specific type. For those of you who don't know on the Wisconsin quarter, there is a couple of varieties with extra leaves on them. The leaves will be located below the um, the big left leaf to the on the corn stalk, right above the cheese wheel. There are, of course, the regular variety, which is what this coin is. And then there are two other varieties, one with a high leaf, which runs up and down uh, the side of that big leaf, and the low leaf, which is the more common of the two, which hangs down and over. And I'm going to go ahead and do this because occasionally I go through these. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Wisconsin Quarter, of course, is, well, first of all, in my opinion, one of the only modern varieties that is actually very cool. Um, one of the closest things you can get to, say, a double die, um, a double die obverse, you know, the like the 55 double die obverse, where you actually had something that was clearly re-engraved. And if not, we've got a bunch of change, right? Uh, you know, what's the downside? They're a quarter, right? So we were a part of the discovery of these. One of our customers found them. And I remember when we were first going through them, I was, I was really perplexed and amazed because it's so obvious that this is something that the Mint did that was done at the Mint, I should say. Maybe I shouldn't say the Mint did it because there's so much mystery about this because the official U.S. stance U.S. Mint stance on these was that they are uh, not, it was not something that was done by a Mint employee or by the Mint. It is some type of quote unquote loose piece of metal that was kind of, sh just kind of got struck into the dies. So now when we originally did this, you'd find rolls, you'd go through rolls like this where there was just a whole lot of nothing, right? And then, so that that's pretty typical. In fact, it's been a, it's been a little while since I've had a roll of these that I went through and actually found anything. You coin roll hunters, man, I don't know. I know it's the thrill of the hunt. Of course, I'm also... This is a type that you can fly through. Unlike some of the varieties, like when you're looking for some of the small double die varieties, where you've really got to sit and stare at coins, these things, they pop right off the page if you see, see one. You can see them from a distance really easily. Of course, I'm trying to get it to where you guys can see as I see, which is different than normally how I would do it. I'm just trying to think about all the thoughts that I didn't complete as I talk because I know sometimes I talk and I have a thought and then I don't complete it and then I go on to the next thought because some some other thought came into my head which I felt was like really important. So important that I had to stop my previous thought. So as I used to go through these rolls, so you'd find you would find nothing lots of times. And then sometimes when you found something, usually you'd find multiples. If you found one coin that was good you would have found uh you know three four or five in the same roll and rarely 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 would you have a large quantity like once in a blue moon you'd have like 10 to 12 pieces but that is that is not typical so typically you would just find a few of them when we when we first were doing this, these coins they just kept escalating in value. First they were ten bucks, then they were twenty, then they were thirty, you know, and then all of a sudden, before you knew it, they were hundred, then they were two hundred, and then they were running up to fifteen hundred dollars for you know higher grade coins, especially once we started getting them certified. But so far we are a, a roll and a half down. And of course, we're batting a thousand. 
that's a nice way of putting that you're just losing. But uh, these things ran up to crazy money. And then eventually they worked their way back down. Now, higher grade coins can still be hundreds of dollars. You know, common dates, though, uh, or pardon me, common grades, lower grades might be, you know, 75 to 150 bucks. Uh, I still consider it a pretty good deal. You know, I need to look and see kind of what the current pop reports are on these guys. But, you know, it's been a while. But you had coins with uh, known quantities of, I think, less than 20,000 per coin uh, per grading service, right? So I think there's less than 50,000 total known between the two varieties. I should look that up. Maybe after I'm done with this video, we'll go ahead and look it up and kind of fill it in over the top of the screen so we can you know, just fill in right here what the actual pops are at PCGS and NGC currently from uh, the high leaf and the low leaf. And then you, know, you can be amazed at how amazing the engineer is and how he makes the show. He makes the show go round and round, right? So that's why the word engineer has the word engine in it, because without an engine, your car doesn't go. So I have a feeling here as we get into the third roll that uh, we're just not going to find anything because these rolls were all together and we shot blank on the first two rolls. And if I sit in the same position long enough, the blood stops flowing to my feet and eventually probably stops flowing to my brain too. I don't, I'm not a, I'm not a uh, doctor, just a numismatist. But if you hear a big thud and you just see my hands fly up, that's probably just me passing out from looking at too many coins at one time. One of these days, though, when I do a little bit of a coin roll hunt, because I rarely do them, one of these days we're going to find something. Unlike the guys who find something every time. Magically. I know they call me a hater. I prefer the term truth teller. All right, guys, we're getting near the bottom of the barrel here. I just want to say thanks for watching, and uh, you can leave your comments below. If you've ever found any of these in change, which by the way, I got one in change about two years ago. It was not, it was AU, it wasn't UNC. Also, the weirdest thing about these coins, they were found predominantly in the Tucson area. And there was another area, I think, in like Minnesota where they found some. And uh, that's, that's it. That's all I got. Leave your comments. Thanks.